Are you ready? Yeah, you think you can tell us what to do? You think you can tell us what to You are listening live to an all-new one-hour edition of the Billy Box Sports Show. Same old shenanigans, just a little bit more condensed. I'm Boomer Sabata, and I am joined by the person who has been down since day one, Ryan Sabata. How are you doing today? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're running a no-huddle offense now. Now that our show is an hour. Uh, so our first play call is our famous Shocker Nah segment. And uh, hold on, i got to pull it. Th- there we go. Now we can get the, the show started here. All right. For the first statement for the Shocker Nost segment is 44-year-old Bartolo Colon slinging seven perfect innings against the Houston Astros on Sunday. Shocker Nost. Yeah, that's definitely a shock. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. <laughs> that goes without saying. The fact that he even lugs himself out there every fifth day is, is whoa, shocking. Whoa, whoa. What do you mean himself? lugs himself out there? He's a hefty boy. He's a man of tremendous stature. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to be disrespectful like that. No, I mean... He's 44. We don't. I mean, the last person we saw this old out there on the mound was Jamie Moyer. Yeah. And uh, Bartolo's got probably about 50 pounds on Moyer, at least. Oh, I would, yeah. That doesn't mean you have to just point it out. Like, oh, Bart, it's a shot because Bartolo's a big guy. No, it's because he's 44. And hefty, yeah. Yeah. Man, his location was just it's dynamite, good. though. It, I mean, he throws like an 89 mile an hour fastball, which usually would get killed at that level, but it's just, I mean, the location. Yeah, and the thing is, he didn't even get a decision. No, he didn't. Game. Well, he plays for the Rangers, so that doesn't really surprise me that much that he didn't get the decision. It was cool, though. Yeah, it was cool. We were, uh, where were we? <laughs> we were at my apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's where when we're just like, he's perfect through six. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Against the Astros. That's that's even adds to it. Uh, number two for the Shocker Nas segment, LA Dodgers beginning of the season as bottom feeders in the NL West. Uh, yeah, it's a shock. There's no reason to be concerned, though. Uh, they're sitting at third right now in the division, just behind the uh, Diamondbacks and Rockies. I mean, you look at the division. The Diamondbacks look really good. They look like they can compete with the Dodgers for the division title. Looking at the Rockies, I don't know if they have the pitching yet that the Diamondbacks and Dodgers do. So I think they'll finish uh, below both of those teams, which means the Dodgers just have then San Francisco, who looks like the same team as last year, and the Padres. So, yeah, it's shocking. They haven't been able to take advantage, get some early wins, but there's no reason to worry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a shock for me. Um, the way that the Diamondbacks have been playing, their, their pitching staff, that's just that's tremendous. Do you think it has something to do with these uh, sudden injuries that the Dodgers had right at the end of spring training? They probably, I mean, they're, they're deep enough to still be competitors without Justin Turner. But I think it was the timing of it and the fact that they were already getting settled into the lineup and uh, the opening day lineup and, okay, this is how we're going to do it, and then suddenly that ends. And, I mean, we saw it the, the first couple of games, what, they only scored one run in three games? Yeah. So, yeah, I think that uh, the timing of Justin Turner's injury was, was poor. If I had to choose any, for my player to get hurt at any time, it wouldn't be right before the season starts when you're getting settled in. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, yeah. Number three for Shocker Not, Indiana Pacers beating the Cavaliers by 18 in game one of the NBA playoffs. Shocker Not. Yeah, I'd have to say that's shocking. Uh, the, the More of the 18 points over the loss. I, I Again, I don't think the Cavaliers have anything to worry about. It's just not going to be a sweep. Uh, they got the loss out of the way now. LeBron's going to come back. He's going to take at least four of the next five 
if not the next four. Yeah. And, and they'll move on in the garbage east. Uh, for me, it, it's kind of give or take. I think the fact that they beat them by 18 is kind of shocking. I mean, if they would have beat them by four or something like that, a, a modest amount, it wouldn't have really surprise me. I mean, it's this Cleveland team is probably one of the least competitive teams that LeBron James has been on in terms of the playoffs. Um, and the the Pacers just came out and they played. They played good defense. Um, didn't turn the ball over a whole lot. So, yeah, it doesn't necessarily – it would surprise me if the Pacers ended up winning, obviously, uh, winning the whole series. But, I mean, they get one from them okay. This is actually the first time that LeBron James has trailed in a first-round playoff series in his entire career. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right, number four for Shocker Nah. Columbus Blue Jackets with a 2-1 to advantage on the Capitals in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Devastating. No, Devastating. It's, not ch- it's not shocking. It's not it's, shocking. No, I mean, this this Capitals team doesn't seem to have the same firepower as teams in the past. And, I mean, it's what the Capitals do. They choke. Come play I was actually going to I was gonna mention that. Are the Caps the biggest choke artists in, in recent sports history? Uh, yeah. Because they have everything yeah. that they could possibly need. Yeah, I'd say that's probably about true. Is it more painful when the, the Caps choke in the playoffs or the Yankees? Uh, Yankees. Yankees? Yeah. Not even close. Uh, well, you're not, you are not. You don't have a specific... Well, how about when Aaron Rodgers chokes in the playoffs? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that... No, that never happens, number one. And number well, there two, was that one time against the Cardinals. No, no. Choke! Hail Mary! <laughs> no, Hail but, Mary! No, not that yeah. one. The, years before that. No. When he fumbled it right into the defensive lineman's hands, and he returned it for a touchdown. Oh, maybe. I don't think you're an Aaron Rodgers fan yet, though. You're still. I think you're still with the Chiefs' kingdom at that I point. I don't know. That was it. Was that it was that long ago? All right. The fifth and final statement for Shocker Nod: Dallas Cowboys releasing three-time Pro Bowl wide receiver Des Bryant. Shocker Nod. No. Um. Not shocking. We. Uh, I mean, there were rumbles about it for several months now that he was going to get traded. Uh, I guess they couldn't find a partner because he got cut. And uh, he wants to go to the... Uh, he wants to stay in the NFC East. Mm-hmm. And so the Giants are apparently the favorite. But Brandon Marshall doesn't want him there. So that's going to be... I wouldn't imagine so. <laughs> Brandon Marshall, Des Bryant, and Odell on the same team. That'd be interesting. Oof. That would be brutal. Hey, but yeah, that would be bad. In the grand scheme of things, no, I'm not surprised as Bryant's going to be in a New Jersey. Uh, there have been people saying the Ravens. Yeah, I don't see him going to the Ravens. They say the Bears. Mm, maybe not a whole lot of allure compared to going to the Giants or going to the Eagles, maybe. That was another possible landing spot. Um, yeah, it doesn't really surprise me. He's kind of a locker room cancer. He's a a diva in a sense. He fires up his team, but at the same time, he's... He causes a lot of drama. That that's that's a stone cold fact. That's a cold hard fact. Stone cold. <laughs> All right, MLB talk. Are the Mets real contenders in the NL East? Twelve and four start. Uh, currently, let's see. The Nationals are nine and nine now, so that's only the the real competition in that division. So, are the Mets contenders in the in the NL East? What do you think I'm going to say? You're gonna say no, but yeah, it's a it's a rhetorical yeah, I'm question. Saying I no. guess, in this, yeah, in this in this sense. you're dang tootin'. No, the Mets can't win. Nationals are stacked from top to bottom. The only thing that's gonna prevent them is if Scherzer and Strasburg both get hurt and and miss extended time. The Mets pitching, I mean, outside of Syndergaard, who's looked good so far. Yeah, and Degrom. I mean, you got you're hoping Mats, Wheeler, and Harvey all are above There's average. Vargas. Var okay, and there's <clears throat> Giselman and Lugo in the bullpen. Okay, that's that's not that's a long relief. That's a nothing burger. Well, it's still that's a nothing sandwich. <laughs> but you, I mean, you're outside of those two. You're you're hoping for above average seasons. Whereas with the Nationals, they yeah they have a great one two punch, better than the Mets, but they they also have depth at their pitching, uh, for their pitching, Tanner Roark, uh, Gio Gonzalez. They're, 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 they're pretty stacked. And uh, Hellickson, Jeremy Hellickson, which, yeah, okay. and, and <laughs> the, the point still stands, though, yeah. is that and, and the Nationals aren't going anywhere. And with Bryce Harper playing the way he is. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think that they will be wild card competitors. Um, 
yeah, it's still too early to say that they'll beat Washington. The main concern for me for Washington is they've had a lot of early injuries. Daniel Murphy, Adam Eaton. I don't want to say that they'll get the same injury bug that the Mets got last season, but having these early injuries uh, is a concern. But it is to, I mean, Murphy's huge. He's huge in that lineup. Eaton, eh, you can probably live without that. But, yeah, once if they take a hit to Scherzer or Strasburg, then there's really going to be some concerns um, for Nationals fans, not for Mets fans. Um, but, yeah, Mets are going to be wild card contenders, definitely. Where will the current division-leading Pittsburgh Pirates end up? Fourth. They're going to end up fourth. fourth. Uh, I mean, you look at what they're going against. They're going against Chicago, the uh, dynasty mm-hmm. in Chicago. Slow start. That's okay. Yeah, and this, that's going against St. Louis, who has upgraded their roster in, in several spots. Their offense is looking good. Milwaukee, who made some big offseason moves that haven't quite panned out yet. Uh, just waiting on the chemistry to come through on that one. So they'll finish behind those three teams. They'll finish in front of Cincinnati because, good God, yeah, <laughs> that's bad. Three and fourteen. So they'll finish fourth. They, I mean, they don't have enough p- uh, pitching or even offensive firepower to sustain a a real good run. For me, I have uh, them battling for third in the division with the Brewers. So similar to what you were saying. Uh, in the long run, I think the Brewers would would end up taking that. Um, just because of the bats that they have in their lineup. Uh, the Pirates, yeah, one of those situations where it's just a hot start. Um, in the long run, it'll, it'll make sense that they got rid of McCutcheon, but right now it's just kind of, yeah, just kind of a transition, I guess. All right, we did this last week. Uh, we're going to do it again. Your top five MLB power rankings. You're just going to do this until the Mets aren't in it anymore, and then, and then the I'm gonna be like, back on. I'm going to be like, no, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and, then, and then, yeah, I'm going to bring it up. You're just going to be like, we never did that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we stopped, you know, time constraints and transfers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. All right, so for – I'm going to start five. Got the New York Mets. Number five is number much five. They, they're they're my number five, too. Number the the five. last two games concerning, complete bullpen just blew up a couple nights ago. What was a six run, a six run eighth, and then a two run ninth, I believe. It was something like that, but it was just a complete meltdown. And then la- last night, they lost that game because they left too many runners on base. They had like 12 hits, but only two runs. So they left a lot of, of runners on base. But. They're still twelve and four, so they they belong in my power rankings. So, okay. Number four, looking at the Houston Astros. Ah, looking at the Houston yeah. Astros struggled this week. Yeah. Look. Now fall now fall the second in the in the AL West. Uh, still like their pitching. Their pitching's really good. Just got to be more consistent uh, offensively. Can't let a forty four year old Bartolo Colon <laughs> take you to town for <laughs> seven innings, but it happens. Yeah. Nah, well. So I'm putting them at four. <laughs> I have the D-backs at my number four, and I have the Astros as my number three. Um, with the lineup and the pitching, I, I just didn't want to get too hasty. I mean, yeah, the Astros, they just had a bad week, so I'm not going to boot them out and just put them at number four because they were my, my number two last week or something like that. So, yeah, with the D-backs, um, they're definitely going to be a, the real deal. They proved it last year, and they're, they're going to continue this year. So, I've got Arizona number three. Okay. Uh they're pitching looking uh, pretty good as well. The uh, only difference is, is they have an extra win at this point. And they're, and they're the hotter team at the moment. Yeah. My number two, the LA Angels. 13-4. and four, Two and a half up on Houston. That's some fantastic stuff. That is some fun watching. That is some fun baseball to watch. Yeah, I got the, I got the Angels too as well. Uh, Shohei Otani, again, I was right. Uh, it's okay. He got a blister. That's okay. That is not what we expected out of him to get a blister and only play two innings. Well, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm being sarcastic if you can't tell through the microphone. <laughs> but nonetheless. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's tremendous what he's doing. Uh, Mike Trout, duh, he's going to be a, a performer. Um, I, how's Kinsler and Cozart doing? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, I don't know the stats of yeah. the LA Angels. So, yeah, I mean, looking good, looking yeah. sharp. Mm-hmm. You're number one? Going with the New York Yankees on this one. Let me explain. Are you really? Yeah. Are you? What? Yeah. Yeah. 
You are my notes. You are not. Yeah. No, you're not. Go into your Yankees. Yeah, then why are you hiding your paper? I don't. You don't get to look at my notes. You're not putting. How could you put? Putting the Yankees there that we saw the best one two three punch in baseball and Judge Stanton and Sanchez. No, no, that you didn't you're write that down. At an, you're, you didn't write that down. You're looking at an offense you, that is incredible, and you're looking at a uh, at a rotation where if Sonny Gray can pitch well, then he's going to win the Cy Young. You're just saying that just to try and ruffle my feathers. I know that you didn't write Yankees. I put There's, Boston. Okay. I don't need to explain yeah. any further. I have the Red Sox at one too. Come on. <laughs> Luckily, I took a, a, a step back. I was like, wait. There's, there's treachery afoot. Step back. <laughs> Step back three, son. <laughs> 2K. All right. Let's move on to the NBA. Can the Pacers find a way to get past the Cavs? Has the game started yet? We have it the, has, yes. The, the game's going on behind me and in front of Ryan here in the yeah, studio. Yeah, the game has started. Yeah. Yes. I, I'd have to look in the mirror, but I still can't see it. So We already talked about this. Uh, no, the Pacers cannot find a way. There's a cat outside the studio. Oh, yeah. Isn't sure nature enough. isn't nature great? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet nature. <laughs> but yeah, I'd, no, the Pacers. I don't believe they'll find a way past LeBron in this one. Yeah. I, I'm calling in five. Calling in five. Yeah, I don't think they'd be able to do what they did um, uh, three more times. Uh, what they did at the Cavs in Game One. Um, yeah, it's it's still too hard to go up against LeBron. I mean, he's only down by one game. Uh, Sports Center and ESPN and all the other sports outlets love the fact that he lost the first game, but it's not that big of a deal. Which team is more likely to advance, the 76ers or the Celtics? Going with the Sixers here. Uh, Joel Embiid's injury is not going to threaten his status in the playoffs unless they get eliminated. Uh, whereas Celtics still have no Gordon Hayward, uh, no Kyrie Irving. They, I mean, they, the Bucks could win. The series is what I'm saying. So, yeah. Uh, 76ers. They're the younger team. Mm-hmm. I mean, given they had the, the Celtics are are pretty young as well. The 76ers just have a gel about them. And, and I we'll get to them here in just a second as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have the 76ers too. Um, Celtics just, I mean, they don't have Kyrie, so... I mean, and and I know that they're up in the series two nothing, but eventually it's gonna it, it's gonna be evident that they miss Kyrie Irving. Um, yeah, and then you were talking about the Seventy Sixers just have a certain thing about them. They're just inspired, um, more well rounded. Their young talent's a little bit more experienced, maybe a little bit more talented. Um, yeah, so Seventy Sixers definitely most likely to advance. Uh, who's making it to the conference finals? Looking at Cavs 76ers on this one. Okay. On the eastern side. I do too. Uh, so, uh, Cleveland's up 11 nothing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in the west, got a little shock here. A little shock. Okay. Going Rockets Warriors. That's not a shock. <laughs> I had that too. I had that built up. It was a false build up. So uh, who do you have winning those games? Uh, Cavs and Warriors. I have the Rockets beating the Warriors. I think it's going to take a lot more than just unbalanced, flashy shots from KD and and the rest of the team to get past the Rockets. And I don't think they're going to be expecting that. Well, more power to you. I'm just saying. I I saw the Rockets with my own eyes. You did, and it was. And you saw the second best team in the. Well, no, that's incorrect. No, it's no, the not. Rockets are the best team in the West. They just they they. Play better basketball. They get the job done. The Warriors are flashy, given it's efficient. But yeah, I don't think three titles. I mean, I think if if you if a, a team like the Rockets, who is just good fundamental basketball, they go toe to toe with a team like the Warriors, who is flashy and relies heavily on the pure talent of each individual player. Uh, I'm going with the Rockets. Hmm. The fundamentals of basketball, Ryan. Thirteen nothing. Thirteen nothing now. Yeah. Is LeBron James just, is his head on fire yet? No. Yeah. Is it in NBA Jam? Is it your head that sets on fire or is it? It's your head, yeah. It's the head, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick water break. Got some perfect circle and black label society here for you. Uh, Penalty Box Sports Show here on KFHS Radio.
Welcome back, everybody, to the, the uh, Penalty Box Sports Show here on KFHS Radio. We had some uh, some tasty jams from A Perfect Circle, uh, Black Label Society, and Testament. I threw the, the Testament in at the end uh, because I will have the, the honor of seeing them open for Slayer August 18th. Um, should be a, a nice, good time. Yeah. Yeah. If you can go, yeah, I got see. two tickets. I mean, I've got a re- I've got a real job, but <laughs> oh yeah, I, yeah, I'm a real <laughs> job. Yeah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, right. And we're gonna play a little bit of a game. Are you ready? Okay. All right. I'm gonna <clears throat> play some random WWE superstar intros. Oh, okay. And then you're gonna have to guess who it is. I've got this in the bag. All right. Let's see. This is my thing. Super, super, super okay, that's not fair. What do you mean that's not fair? They just said at the very beginning who it was. Lucius Fox? Super, super, super fly. Oh, Jimmy Superfly? Yeah. Okay. Come on now. Hit me with that Jimmy. Jimmy. Ah, here we go. It's Paige. Yeah. Yeah, that's an easy one. That you one, said you that one again. blisters the ears. It does. <laughs> All right, let's 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 see what else we got here. Let's see how no, uh, let's see how much you know your WCW. Uh, Puff Daddy. Buff Pump. Oh, Scott Steiner. No. Pump Daddy. Buff. Buff Bagwell. Yep. Buff Bagwell. Is this Cian Almas? No, it's not. No. no, it's not. No. I don't know. Chavo? Maurice. Uh, oh, Maurice. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Our truth. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. You ready, Ryan? What's up? 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 Now, he might be a little bit dated. I mean, he's a veteran wrestler, but I mean, that, that's some pretty good stuff. That gets the crowd going. Yeah. Some good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Ooh, here's a good one. Tatanka. Nope. Tatanka starts off very <laughs> raci- <laughs> ra- racistly. <laughs> uh, Ricky Steamboat. Nope. Heck shot Jim Dugan. Nope. Kong Yan Arn. Umaga. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright, one more, one more, and then we'll then we'll move on. Gotta find a good one though. Ooh. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> <Ryback>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought it was gonna start off a little bit differently. But yeah, that is Rybacks. I wish he came back. That'd be a pretty. That'd be a pretty good Royal Rumble surprise. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I threw threw a couple curveballs. You said it was in the bag. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> so what did you think of the uh, WWE Superstar Shakeup? Not a lot of people move places. Yeah. Looking at some new champions. That's it. <laughs> oh no! Nothing in Co- specific. That Co- was call their own nailed three. They're up 31 30, 16 now. Thirty-one sixteen. Cavs up on the Pacers. In studio update. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Baron Corbin's going to Raw. That's good. Miz going to SmackDown. We're going to see Daniel Bryan, Miz. Uh, Breeze Ango on Raw now. Shelton Benjamin's on his own and heel. Finally. <laughs> and heel. Gable on Raw. Yeah. There's a lot of new storylines we could look at. Some of Joe on SmackDown. That, was, that kind of surprised me a little bit. But then I was like, okay. This explains why they're suddenly going, like, every pay-per-view is now Raw and SmackDown. Like, there's no divided pay-per-views now. I was like, okay, that explains why. They're going to have a lot of cross-brand feuds. (laughs) (laughs) Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns? No. Yes. He said he's going to, he's facing him a backlash. Oh. Oh. See, now we're starting to blur the lines of two shows. I think that they stopped that after Mania. Because it was... I mean, it's just kind of okay. It ran its course. It had Survivor Series. It yeah, had Royal we'll Rumble. So, yeah, I didn't mind it. Um, 
I'm glad Shelton Benjamin's finally singles competitor. I don't know what took so long. All right, NHL talk. A lot of people would argue, okay, now you're getting back to the real sports, but uh, let's get to some hockey. Biggest surprise so far in the Stanley Cup playoffs? I'd say not a whole lot up to this point, except maybe Vegas's complete sweep of the Kings. Yep. It's the only one I would really put up there as a shock. All the other series are pretty cut and dry. Blue Jackets on top of the Caps? I mean, we've seen it's, it. It's hard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've seen it. We've yeah. seen it before, multiple times. So what, uh, how would you compare being a Capitals fan to being a Yankees fan? Uh, I mean, fan of greatness, what can I say? Yeah, obviously. You, I'm not as big a fan of the Capitals as I am of the Yankees. But you're still a fan. Yeah. So how would you compare to the... What, what's it like when the, the, the Capitals lose in the playoffs compared to when the Yankees lose in the playoffs? More painful for the Yankees. Yeah? Yeah. Uh... Stop looking at me like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Capitals. They, they we they tend to choke, and we've talked about that. As unfortunate as it is, that's the way the cookie crumbles. You are just a man of many sound bites, aren't you? Yeah. How about the amount of goals scored in this Stanley Cup playoffs? There have been f- fourteen games with one team scoring five five or more points. That's good. It's good for the sport. It's pretty. It's pretty wacky. <laughs> well, was it eight nothing? The Sharks beat the uh, ducks. The, the Ducks was it eight nothing or was it seven nothing? I didn't see the final. Yeah, we don't really keep up with our Ducks hockey. Not since they changed their colors and uniform scheme. Yeah, they're not the Mighty Ducks anymore. <laughs> that was a rough time <laughs> yeah, for everyone. That was a rough, a rough adjustment. <laughs> uh, since we've seen a few playoff games at this point, uh, who's the nastiest? In a good way. Who's the nastiest looking team? I uh, gotta go with the Pittsburgh Penguins. They uh, they ripped up on the Flyers in Game One. They've they've dropped a game, but I mean you're looking out there. You got Kessel. You've got Sidney Crosby and Malkin all out there playing like superstars. It's really not a whole lot any team can do. Uh, even Tampa Bay at that point. I think Tampa Bay may be the best competitor for Pittsburgh on that East side. But yeah, I mean I'm, I'm a little worried there's going to be a three peat. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the nastiest looking team is the Bruins, just because of the way that they're they're playing the Maple Leafs, who's young and fast. I mean, they were just stifling them, and they are playing some tough, bully-like hockey. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to give it to the Bruins for the, the nastiest looking team. Uh, I hope that we don't see a three-peat. Not a big Penguins fan. Uh, who else were you talking about? Oh, the Lightning? Yeah, I mean... I wouldn't mind seeing the Lightning win the Stanley Cup, but with the Bruins, it's just kind of they might have that that edge that that uh, that Doug Glatt type of stuff that that will get them into the, the Stanley Cup Finals. I think. Okay. Yeah. That's your like decision, man. Yeah. But it's gonna be Pittsburgh. Gonna be looking at a Pittsburgh Nashville part two. Part D. Part D. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the with the Nashville, I think that they've they control their own destiny at this point. Um, I'm surprised that the the Avalanche took one from them in the series, but uh, yeah, other than that, not a whole lot of big threats compared to what the the Predators have. I mean, if you put the Predators in the East, it's a little little bit tougher, but I still think that they would pull through. That's just how good they are. So I have uh, Predators Bruins in one of the most physical Stanley Cup Finals that we have ever seen. I mean, yeah, you're you're allowed to be wrong, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah. The problem is, is Aaron Rodgers. Where are you putting him? What, 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 Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, which game is he going to? <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Wisconsin doesn't have an NHL team, so, I mean, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, precisely. <laughs> he needs a team. He's not cheering for the Wild. <laughs> no. All right, some predictions on Wednesday. Penguins at Flyers. Or, I guess, today. Tonight. Go on, Pat. Tonight. Penguins at Flyers. I have the Flyers because I believe in home home ice advantage. Are I know these not don't. series predictions? No, we're just going game by game. Oh. Oh. Because okay. we did the series predictions last week. Oh, okay. I know you forgot. Maybe I did. Lightning at Devils. Going Lightning. I'm going with Lightning as well. Predators at Avalanche. Preds. 
Yeah, but I have the price. How much do you think those avalanche tickets cost? No, I don't know. I'm going to search it. Because uh, we went to an avalanche game. I don't know how much the tickets were because I didn't have to pay for them. So I didn't worry about it. But, uh, yeah, I bet they are just pricey, pricey. Let's see. Tickets. Colorado Avalanche tickets. 2018 playoffs available now. $119 are the cheapest seats that you could get, and they are poopy. That's upper level. So, yep, that's pricey. We were upper level. What are you talking about? Well, for a play, to pay 119 bucks to have seats like that? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Upper level corner? Yeah. No. What's your deal, guy? Now, if it was the Blues, then, yeah, I'd probably pay that much, but I probably won't have to worry about that for the next three years or so. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, yo, I just don't. I don't see it happening. It's, it's, a, it's a no for me, dog. I don't believe you. <laughs> Ducks at Sharks. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> uh, In studio update. Sharks. NBA on TNT. <laughs> <laughs> Cavs are playing to <laughs> lay the smack down on the Pacers. <laughs> oh, drained. What's uh, the score now? 33, 36 to 20. 36 to 20, Cavs are up. Uh, I'm going Sharks. Complete sweep. You're going with the Sharks? I'm going with the Ducks. Uh, I'm not... So sure why I just trash the fact that they they're not the Mighty Ducks anymore. So you know what I'm going to change that. I hope that the, the Ducks go to hockey hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's brutal. <laughs> go, go Sharks! All right, Thursday Bruins at Maple Leafs. Go Bruins! I'm going with the Bruins also. Yeah. Capitals or Blue Capitals. Jackets. Next question. Yeah, I thought they're choke. Uh, they're choke artists. That's what they do. But I mean, it's, it's only down two one at this point. I don't know, man. Still picking caps. Wild at Jets. No, let's not skip over the second one. Oh, second yeah. to last. I crossed it out because it was already done. I wrote this the, <laughs> before the Kings and Golden Knights, so I, th- I was like, I was if, gonna say, uh, if necessary. I've put my life savings on this. <laughs> I put my money on Vegas sweeping the Kings. Put your money down on it now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I get yeah, I, yeah, I had the written down Kings at Golden Knights, um, but that was before their fourth and final game of that series. So that was an if necessary. So while the Jets, you have the Jets. I got the Jets. I also have the Jets. All right, before we get to our top five running backs of all time, let's talk about the draft. Now, Tom Brady said that he has not committed yet to playing the to playing the 2018 season um contemplating retirement uh, what do the patriots do if tom brady has yet to make a firm decision come draft time well i'm hearing from my sources that tom brady is to make his decision within the next 12 hours would you get that from barstool sports no <laughs> i know tom we, we, oh, you know Tom. You we've know played Tom. pickleball together. And pickleball. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a sport that he would play, though. Uh, well, the Patriots are most likely going to make a trade, try and get into that top 10 position, maybe land a Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen type of quarterback. Definitely not. Probably not going to be able to get into the top three, uh, especially since the Jets traded for that pick. And, I mean, they, I mean, they could. Sound, right now you sound like a, a mix of Niles from Frazier and Mel Kuyper, and I don't like it. <laughs> <I> like <laughs> Change it. your tone. <laughs> But, I mean, really, when you come down to look at it, the Giants really don't need that pick at number two as much as, say, the Patriots, if Tom Brady is to leave. Uh, likely, I mean, we're talking three firsts, maybe even a second thrown in there as well. And the Patriots are going to jump up there and take Josh Rosen. You think it'll be Josh Rosen? Uh, yeah, I think. If they, can, if they can get in the top three. The, they certainly ain't working out a trade with the Browns. No. That ain't going to happen. It's not. Yeah, that will be interesting. Um, this was all news to me uh, just about an hour ago when it, I saw it somewhere. Saquon Barkley does not want to play for the Browns. Is that what you're getting at? No. The the, oh. the fact that Tom Brady hasn't committed oh. to playing in 2018. I'm okay. just like, wait, I didn't even know that that was a thing. He's probably the only player who could get away with that. Just saying he's not committed yet to the 2018 season. Everyone else should just be like, oh, what a punk. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Tom Brady. So they're like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like Big Ben. Yeah. If it was Big Ben, people would be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. No, he wouldn't really say that. Uh, all right, so that was our brief NFL talk. We'll get to much more next week. Saquon we'll Barkley not wanting to be on the Browns. He never said that. 
his his the people he's he's hired have said that. No, they haven't. Yeah, they have. They have not said that. that it, it's a news story, Jay. Is it a news story? Yeah. Is it? Will it be the first thing that I see when I search Saquon Barkley on Google? Uh, yeah, most likely. Saquon Bar. No, not Saquon Barkley's girlfriend. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, Saquon Barkley is a hometown superstar. Saquon Barkley hand, hand, handlers don't want him going to Cleveland. That's exactly what I said. His handlers don't want him going to That's Cleveland. That doesn't mean said. he does. That's what I just said. I don't think he really gives a damn. I think he just wants to play football. No, That's why cares. I want them to draft him. If you got to play in New York or Cleveland, Todd McShay saying New York. It's almost a guarantee at this point. Unless Browns don't go Darnold. Okay. We're talking Darnold. Number one, we're talking Barkley two. We'll get to three next week. Yeah, with our, our full first-round mock draft next week, uh, right before the draft. Uh, we will have a special guest with us, too. Next Deontay, week? Deontay Horner will be making his return oh. for just one week only. Okay. Tickets now available at penaltybox.org. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see We'll see if he actually fills out the mock draft or just thinks of somebody off the top of his yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> I have the Dolphins getting Orlando Brown, bro. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe four months ago, but <laughs> times have changed. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be fun next week. All right, top five running backs of all time. Who's your number five? Number five? Jim Brown. Ooh, you're number five. Number five. Here's, I mean, here's what we're looking at. Here's the situation. Wow, you just do not respect history at all, do you? you I mean, we're looking at Jim Brown. We're looking at a one-time NFL champion. Looking at a three-time MVP. Yeah. That's pretty nice. We're lo- Voted look- the Pro Bowl nine times. First team All-Pro eight. And how many seasons did he play? Played in... Nine seasons. Nine. Yeah, and he got 12,312 career rushing yards, 106 And keep in mind, keep in receivers. mind, they did not play, what is it now, 19 games? 19 total if you went make it to the Super Bowl. They only played 14 games, I believe, in the NFL at that time. Maybe even less. And he he still has those stats. 12,000 yards. Yeah, I mean, I mean, still top 10 in rushing yards. Okay, that's And fine. he played back in the 50s Hey, and I'm 60s. putting him five. 100 point... 100 point... 100 100 five. 100, I am, I am 100, very confident in my list. 104.1 okay? yards per game. He's the only running back. Is he, are you put, is he your number one? He's my number two. Okay. So, yeah, you, you need to put some respect on these legends, man. I'm putting Brown five. My number five, I jumped the gun quite a bit. My number five is Emmitt Smith. Um, yeah, he's the all-time rushing leader, three-time Super Bowl champion, eight-time Pro Bowl, four-time All-Pro. Played 15 seasons. 13 of those seasons was uh, with a fantastic Cowboys offensive line. An offense that didn't necessarily need, need this him. This is top five running backs, and you're making it seem like... Top five overrated player. No, I'm just saying this is the this is why he's not top three is because he was with a spectacular Cowboys team that had Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin, a great offensive line. He had Daryl Johnston to lead the way, so that's why he's my number five. Okay, so it's it, yeah, I mean he's a great player and he he deserves all the accolades that he has, but that's why he's my number five and he's not higher. Fair enough. We'll get back to that. You're number four. Number four. We're looking at Ladanian Tomlinson. Ladanian Tomlinson. Ladanian Tomlinson. Wow. Debated on putting him higher, to be honest. Really? Yes. Uh, I mean, we're looking at a one-time MVP, five-time Pro Bowl, three-time All-Pro, uh, record most rushing touchdowns in a season, 28. That's an amazing stat. Uh, 1,300, uh, 13,684 career rushing yards, 145 career rushing touchdowns. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking at explosion. In Ladanian and Tomlinson, yeah. I think that's something Jim Brown probably didn't have. Explosiveness? Uh, yeah, I it was mean, a different time. It was a different time. You're correct, <laughs> but I mean, when it comes down to it, I'm taking Ladanian Tomlinson over Jim Brown. Well, I got Eric Dickerson in my number four, so I'm not going to jump the gun too quick. Uh, I've been doing that in this this hour that we've spent together. <laughs> uh, Eric Dickerson is my number four, thirteen thousand two hundred fifty nine yards, uh, eighth all time in ten legit seasons. He had two seasons at the end of his career where he played for the Raiders and the Falcons. He didn't do anything. Uh, I think he was injured or something like that. Uh, 2,105 yards in 1984. That's still a record. Uh, people have come close. 90 yards per game through his entire career. Six-time Pro Bowl. Five-time All-Pro. 
and he had 3,913 rushing yards in his first two seasons. So you want to talk about explosiveness, Eric Dickerson. He didn't crack my list, but... I was, yeah, yeah, because he, he played before the year 2000, so you don't have anybody... You don't regard anybody. Okay. I mean, not that, that my first pick was Jim Brown. and yeah, But he's number five. Yeah. A pioneer of the game, a pioneer of the running back position. You have him at number five. Yeah. Disrespectful. That is correct. Number three. Number three? Going to Walter Payton. Ooh. Number three. You struck a big nerve with me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Taking Walter Payton three. Number three? Number three. He's my number one. Okay. Uh, okay, but, uh, okay, Super Bowl or Super Bowl champion, one-time MVP. Uh, the, the I like the sixteen hundred or the sixteen thousand rushing yards, one hundred and ten career rushing yards. Could have gotten in the end zone a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I respect what he did for the Browns. Uh, definitely went around the Browns, out. the the Bears. Uh, I respect what he did for the Bears. Uh, definitely a time when running backs like him thrived. Uh, big, strong, uh, kind of have it all. Uh, and yeah, that's that's where I'm putting Walter Payton. Okay, we're gonna get back to that. We will. Okay. He might have been sweetness, but I, I for damn sure ain't no sweetness. My number three is Barry Sanders. Uh, ten seasons, ten Pro Bowls, six-time All-Pro, fifteen thousand two hundred sixty-nine rushing yards, third all-time, ninety-nine point eight yards per game. So close, <laughs> so close to joining Jim Brown, <laughs> uh, and he was a, a one-time MVP. Um, if this was the top five most athletic running backs, he would be my number one. But I think it's he played ten seasons. Yeah, he made the Pro Bowl each year, but he was still only a six-time All-Pro. Um, and there were some pretty good running backs at that time playing with him. But still, um, I still think being a top three running back of all time is is pretty respectable. So, yeah, my number two, Jim Brown, who you had at number five. Who's your number two? My number two, Emmitt Smith. Taking Emmitt Smith, respect to the dog in him. Uh, oh yeah, I do too. He gets, he gets, he got the. Uh, he's, he, I mean, you you knock him for having a good O line, but someone's got to, someone's got to have that rock, and he was consistent with that rock in his time with Dallas. Okay, but that does, yeah, that he's still top five. Consistent. But you got to, you're trying to make it seem like I have him as the most overrated player of all time. No, he's not overrated. It's just I have, I have Eric Dickerson, Barry Sanders, Jim Brown, and Walter Payton in front of Emmett Smith because they proved that they were playmakers regardless of who was protecting him. In, in, yeah, I mean, in I mean, we're line. looking at Emmitt Smith, career leader in not just rushing yards, but also rushing touchdowns as okay. well. So, I mean, and, and I mean, well, when time, you have three time Super Bowl champion, eight time all pro or eight time pro bowl. I mean, all pro four times. I mean, we're looking at a guy who really revolutionized the game in the nineties into the two thousands. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that he's my number two guy. He's number five. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm putting him too because he, he I mean he set the stage for what we've seen in the last okay seventeen seasons and it's pretty easy to be the 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 all time leader in touchdowns when you have Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin yeah that's fine driving it down the field hey. so yeah I mean a three yard great. a three yard run he probably has to run what ten yards on each don't drive. hate great I'm not hating great don't hate great I'm just saying that's why he's not my number two is because of what he had around him that entire time. Okay. Then LeBron's not your best player of all time. No, LeBron's the best player of all time. Kevin Love's hurt. Kevin Love is hurt. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> so you said it the same way that I was like, oh, no. <laughs> thought I was going to turn around and see a spaghetti leg or something uh, like that. My n- number two, Jim Brown, who uh, you disrespected more than I disrespected Emmett Smith, played only nine seasons, and he is still top ten in rushing yards. 12,312. Nine-time Pro Bowler. Eight-time All-Pro, all but one year he was an All-Pro in his career. Three-time MVP, and the only player to have uh, to average more than 100 yards per game in his career. They played about 14 games a season, has 12,000 rushing yards in nine years. And the reason why you do not have him higher is because he is not explosive. Are you saying he's not explosive? I, in take, the same I, take, I, take, I take credence and, and, and physical stature. And physical, he was a monster at the time. Nobody at the have time. Seen, I'm talking. I'm talking. Have you seen Jim prime Brown? Prime physical. Okay. Attributes. What? Uh, how is it Jim Brown's fault that he played 
close it's to not. close to fifty years before, it's not his before fault. Ladini and Tomlinson. It's not his fault. At the time, Jim Brown was unstoppable. He was at a the monster. Time, yeah, for he sure. was Definitely. a block of granite. Absolutely. And that's why. It, oh, because he's not as big as players now. And that's, that's why, why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why he moves down. I take I, I take physical attributes very seriously. Not not the not the fact that he was a Pro Bowler, his entire career, he won All Pro, best player at his position, all but one year. You know, it's the fact that he isn't as big as LT. He's not as big as Emmett Smith, and he probably is bigger than Emmett Smith. Just doesn't seem like he was. That's disrespectful, man. I don't know. I mean, you, take do you need to watch. Period. Do you need to watch Jim Brown highlights? No, I yeah, I get, I get it, I get it. No, apparently, you don't. But I mean, that's why I have five. I mean, he's in the list. Yeah, he's isn't in, that what you said about Emmett Smith? Yeah, I did. But at the same we time, completely backwards. At the same time, you look at the at what Jim Brown was able to do in nine seasons, and you look at what Emmett Smith did in fifteen. I'd like to see what Jim Brown's stats would have been if he played fifteen seasons. We'll see. I mean, I if, that we'll even, see. if that <laughs> we'll was see. even. Possible, given that the, the damage that he he took, he was constantly given the ball, hey. constantly. Okay, then I mean, if, if he's always given the ball, you, I you, and he you, averaged one hundred and four point yards a game, so he did something with the ball. On how well, what, what were his rushing yards per carry? Rushing yards per carry? Yeah, that's the question. I think we all need answered. Well, the, the fact that he averaged one hundred yards a game, I think that goes without saying that. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty efficient when he was handed the ball. Emmett Smith averaged 81 yards a game. Just so you know. What? Emmett Smith averaged 81 yards per game. Emmett Smith, or uh, Jim Brown averaged 5.2 yards per carry. What was Emmett Smith's? So uh, he would have gotten a first down and two carries. First down and two carries. Just throwing that out there. Uh, Emmett Smith's. I'm looking. Uh, 4.2. 4.2, yep. Sounds about right. So, yeah, that's that's disrespectful. It's also disrespectful you don't have Walter Payton in your top two. 16,726 rushing yards, second all-time. Nine-time Pro Bowl, seven-time All-Pro. 21,264 all-purpose yards. So he wasn't just a running back, necessarily. He could do it all. And 88 rushing yards per game on some bad Bears teams. Despite 84, 85, 86, and 87. Those are decent. He was injured in 87, though. Before that, he was all they had. There was nothing around it. Nothing. All of, I would like to see how many of these yards were after contact. Hey, I mean... He, he was the best running back of all time. He's ageless. You could put him in any moment in time, and he would he would be elite. This is one of those categories where you really don't have a clear one. Because the number one, I've got I've got uh, I've got Barry Sanders number okay. one. I could see why people put Barry Sanders because he was he was like a video game, and what he was able to do was in that ten seasons is pretty good. I don't think it's as good compared to Jim Brown's, but it's similar. Yeah. So I mean, I, I like Barry Sanders. Uh. uh Best running back for the time, better than Walter Payton, and my and, and nope, that's just based on my personal opinion. You're lucky that we're out of time. You are lucky. Gonna catch these hands. Oh yeah, ne- next week I, we may have to continue this argument. It may, it may instead of shocker and all, we may have to just continue this because <laughs> it, it it got it got personal quick. All right. Well, I don't know how, but okay. Yeah, it did. When it, when you disrespect sweetness in Jim Brown to me, that that's I don't think that that's gets personal. Disrespect. Yeah, that's disrespectful. That'll do it for the this week's edition of the Penalty Box Sports Show. If you want more, subscribe to the Penalty Box's YouTube page or like the KFHS Radio page on Facebook. I'm done talking. I'm gonna go get some food. Not sure what yet, but it's gonna be good. For my colleague Ryan Sabata, actually not for my colleague Ryan Sabata. Disregard Ryan. I'm Boomer Sabata. Saying goodbye, everybody.